Good morning everybody and welcome to the milking stanchion portion of the dairy goat shack. This is where we milk the dairy goats every morning and the goats we will be milking today are Lily, Hazel and Isa. And this is where the goats will be standing while I'm milking them and we'll be using both a milking machine and milking by hand. And while the goats are up here, they're pretty lucky. They get to eat their favorite food, which is grain, pretty much corn and oats, and they love that stuff. Lily's actually waiting right here because she knows it's her turn. And we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna go get Lily. I'll be right back. All right. So the first thing we gotta do is close up Lily into the stanchion. We don't wanna put it on too tight because the goal isn't to choke her or anything. We just wanna make sure she can't escape because an escape goat is a troublesome goat. All right, and be secure. Next we clean some poop off the feet. Sometimes it's necessary clean poop off the goat's feet. So I'm gonna reach up here, toward her rear end here, and I'm gonna go down her legs so I don't start a hook. Oh. She has strong muscles, this one. Get all that nasty poop stuff right off of there. There we go. Because we don't want poop in the milk. Next step, I reach over here to my Space and get some water, some nice, slightly soapy water, and give her a good wipe down on the udders. This helps to clean them, moisturize them, and get them prepped for milking. Get any residue or anything that could be on there. Then, I take a little test squeeze. Make sure everything's coming out the way it should be from both feet here. Excuse any chicken noise, the chickens like to hang out here, so you'll be hearing them occasionally. And then, after putting down my board, I broke out the big guns, or in this case, our handy dandy hand pump milking machine. Set the jar at the bottom here for maximum gravity. And this is what we use to put around the teeth. Oops, sorry, Lily, I'm gonna make the jump there. Put the syringe right on the teeth and we start pumping. So this is pretty much the same as bleeding your brakes, except we're squeezing out milk in this case. We build up pressure, create a vacuum and some suction, and the milk just starts coming right out, right into the jar. The great thing about using this milking machine is that everything stays sanitary. Lily, for example, is known for stamping, and so it really helps that no matter how much she stamps all over this stuff, she's not going to contaminate the milk. Usually we use a pail when we're hand milking, a pail like this. And unfortunately, if she kicks the pail or sticks her foot in it, we can't keep that milk because it's dirty. So this makes the whole process a lot more sanitary. All right, I'm gonna get the PSI up to close to 10. We'll see how she does. It's coming out pretty steady, so I'm gonna keep it around 10. We don't want it to go any higher than probably 12 PSI because then we could damage her teat and we don't want to do that. Meanwhile, Lily is happily munching away at her grain and completely not bothered by the milking machine. Um, while we're milking, I can tell you that up to a couple of weeks ago, we didn't even have this machine. Uh, the Liz and Curtis on the farm decided to make an investment on this because they realized that their apprentices, mostly me actually, have some wrist troubles. I have carpal tunnel in both my wrists and it, it can get really straining to, to keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, especially if you have multiple goats to milk. So they thought that this would be a great way to make milking an easier process for me, easier for the goats as well because it's less time consuming and actually it's more sanitary anyway. So 
it's kind of good for everybody involved. Thank you, Dansha Farms, for this great hand pump. <laughs> it's really helpful. So once you've finished milking one tea with the machine, you could switch right to the other one. There it goes. Almost up to 10 psi. Uh oh, Lily's almost out of green. Uh oh. Don't worry, Lily. I got you covered. There you go. Gotta make sure she's got enough green, or else she could start stamping. All right. So while. The other teat is being milked out by the machine. I can take a pail and finish hand milking out this teat. Because while this milking machine is really great, it doesn't completely milk the goats dry. And the reason we want to milk the goats dry is that if it helps to increase milk production. The more milk we take out of the udders, the more milk Lily's body will continue to produce. So, to, in order to maximize production, we must extract all of the milk that we can. And occasionally, some of the milk gets stuck up far, farther up in the udder. So what we'll do is we'll give her a little bit of a massage, we'll loosen up any of the milk that's still up there so that it's easier to bring it back down through the teeth. On a side note, that chicken you heard earlier, she just laid an egg. And she had to let everyone know. No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, that's all right. Get out. Nice. <laughs> All right, once the teeth stop springing out milk. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of chickens laying eggs right now. <laughs> All right, you gotta release the pressure. Hold on to that syringe. And then, the next step is to filter the milk. So if you'll follow me. Gotta open up this machine here. And we've got a filter here. I've already used it once, so there's some foam in there, but a paper filter. And what we do is we pour the milk through, gets out any clots or any little bits of blood that may come out because that happens sometimes, completely natural. And we just let the milk filter down into a clean jar, which we'll put in the fridge and either drink, put in cereal, put into anything we cook or turn into cheese. Lots of things you can do with goat's milk. Now Lily has filled almost two half gallon jars, so 
So that means that Lily, in one morning, can put out about a gallon of milk all on her own. It's pretty amazing, really, to think how much milk one goat can produce. So now that she's done with the machine, I'm going to finish her off by hand, if she'll let me. And then we'll send her back and grab Hazel. Hey, Lil. Come on, let's finish. When milking goats by hand, it's important to have quick reflexes to keep their feet out of the pail. Alright, Lily, you gotta finish. We're almost there. Come on. She, does she need more grain? She's got grain. Okay. I know, Hazel, it's almost your turn. Tell it to Lily. <laughs> We're almost there, Lily. Come on, finish up your grain. You got more. Or Hazel's gonna eat it. This is not a fun game we're playing. Meanwhile, Hazel is trying to let herself out. Alright, now that Lily is done milking, we can release her from the stanchion. I'm going to grab her by the collar, release my vice grip here. Oh, my C-clamp. All right, come on, Lily. She just wants to keep eating grain. Mm -hmm. Lily, come on. Let me refill the grain for our friend yeah. Hazel here. I know, Hazel, you're so ready. Let me go get our friend Hazel. Now this is Hazel's second year with kids. So this is the second year they've been milking her. And from what Liz and Curtis have told us, Hazel's always had very small teats. And she's always had very small openings to her teats, so it, it can be pretty hard to milk her. And she can also get stampy. She's also the only goat that likes to poop on the stanchion. So don't be surprised if you see that happen today. And right now, her young baby Guinness, who's currently trying to escape. <laughs> there he is. Guinness, stay in your, stay in your pen. Um, he's still young and he's still drinking most of her milk. So we don't wanna, we don't take too much from her. But the reason that we do milk her out is because, as I mentioned before, we do want the maximum amount of milk production we can get. And in order to get that, we have to make sure she's milk dry. And as hungry as Guinness is, he doesn't quite drink everything she produces. So we'll suck out the rest and make sure she gets her milk production as high as possible. Looks like that one's already done. <laughs> Sorry, Hazel. Let's start the other one. Filter out Hazel's milk. Very much, admittedly. Oh. 
and I'll try milking by hand, but I'm getting the feeling there probably isn't much left to be had in there. Give a massage. Oh, the sun's finally coming out. Good job, Mitch. Mitch is here to help me catch the little Hershey's Kiss pellets she's dropping. At least some of them. <laughs> glamorous. This is the glamorous side of goat milking. She's the matron of the herd, and uh, she has no horns because she was raised on a conventional farm before she came to Dancing the Land. She, uh, she was adopted here at four years old. Her health wasn't great because she had been raised conventionally, which meant she was given a lot of chemical dewormers, given a lot of antibiotics regularly even when she didn't really need them and so she wasn't in the best of health and she still isn't the healthiest goat on the farm but she's a trooper and a champ and a milking machine she uh as you can see she's got one giant udder here and that's because she got mastitis last year in her other udder and it kind of stopped her from producing milk so her one good udder has compensated and now produces almost the amount that Lily's two udders produce. She usually gives up about three quarters of a gallon a day. And uh, Issa's one good udder has a good story this summer. She first, in late June, managed to get a good scrape cut right there, which has healed pretty nicely. Luckily it never got infected, but it didn't look great for a while. And then, just a few weeks later, she actually punctured her udder open, which is really unpleasant. She was leaking milk and blood all over, and didn't look too happy about it. So they had to call the emergency vet who came and gave her three layers of sutures right over here, which are healing quite nicely. And now she's good as new. We had her on antibiotics for a few days and couldn't keep her milk at that point. But now she's off the antibiotics, has been for a few days, and her milk's coming out clean again. So we're keeping her milk. Let's see how much we get out of her today. Now I'm massaging the upper part of her udder because Issa's known for not letting her milk down very easily. Sometimes milk gets stuck up here and if you squeeze it, it feels a bit hard and if you keep squeezing and massaging, eventually it'll start feeling a little bit like jello up there and it'll start releasing the milk so it'll come down much more easily through the teeth. And as you can see, as per usual, Issa's quite the milking machine and quickly fills up the syringe with milk. Uh -huh. 
it's time to get some bug off or bug stuff onto these kids so they don't get chewed up by all the bugs when you're out in your pasture. Yes, hi Esmeralda, you wanna go first? Issa's milk has been filtered. She's all done being milked. And so that is the end of our milking for today. Next we'll be taking these goats out to pasture so they can go eat lots of tasty things and make some more milk for us. And we'll be doing this again tomorrow. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us during our milking session today. And I hope you have enjoyed it. Please send us any comments or questions in the comments section. And once again, thanks for joining us. Have a great day.